Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, this is a very quick reminder about steps and ways in which we can increase our Iman. This is, of course, a concern in every single one of us. Sometimes we feel that we're doing really good in our religion, we're praying so well with khushu, or we're doing so much, so many good deeds, and then all of a sudden we, we go downhill, or we feel we go downhill and we're not doing as much, and this, of course, has an effect on our hearts, and it has an effect on how close we feel we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman is not something that is attained instantly, it is not something that is attained immediately out of like a flash of lightning, but it is something that is a process that is worked at. It is something that is that we need to build within ourselves based upon the things that we do and the things that we do not do. Taqwa, in essence, piety is doing the things that Allah has made obligatory upon us to do and refraining from those things that are prohibited for, from us for, from doing. And this is why in the Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet of Allah said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma min shay'in, that there is nothing that is that I love most from the servant and that the servant does what I've made obligatory upon him to do. And Allah draws close to us by way of the things that Allah has made obligatory for us to do. And then the servant does not continue to draw closer to Allah except through the nawafil, except through those things that Allah has made voluntary for him to do. But he would do them because he's seeking closeness to Allah. And Allah loves that a servant would seek closeness to him until Allah loves that individual and the hadith continues and is beautiful and Allah forgives that individual. Because he's seeking closeness to Allah by the scale that Allah has already established in the kitab and the sunnah. You start with the obligatory and then you kind of work your way through. It doesn't, you don't do it the other way around. Some people, they say you have this false belief and they think if I do enough of small voluntary actions then that is going to count, of course, because on the Day of Judgment it's still a good deed. It is, of course, still a good deed, but Allah expects you to do the things that are obligatory first. Right. Now, where does it all begin? Like the ulama, they say, لِكُلِّ هِدَايَ بِدَايَ وَلِكُلِّ بِدَايَ tawbah. Every guidance has a beginning. And every beginning has repentance. Every beginning has repentance. And sometimes the reason why we cannot increase in our Iman is because we have hidden enemies still inside of us, around us, that we are not making ways to protect ourselves from. And Toba is based upon three conditions. There are three conditions for a correct repentance. And yaqila anil ma'asi, and yanzama ala fi'liha wa nadam and yandam ala fi'liha, that you, you stop the sin that you're committing and that you, um, uh, that you stop the sin you're committing and that you feel a sense of remorse for the sin that you're committing and you make this pledge or you make this promise to Allah that you would not return to the sin, right? Ya ayyuhal ladheena aminu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha Allah says, oh you believe Repent to Allah. Tubu is an imperative, it's a command. Repent all of you to Allah. Turn back in repentance to Allah with a clean and a pure repentance. And it has to be based upon these three conditions. And so that is a, a first step. There are many ways in which a believer seeks to increase in his Iman. One of the ways, of course, is through the book of Allah, the Kitab of Allah. This is not simply a a book that we read like every other book that we read. No, it is a, this is a divine message from Allah. This is why Hassan al-Basri would say, Rahimallah, that the Qur'an, إِنَّمَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ رَأَوَ الْقُرْآنَ رَسَائِلَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ Those who came before us used to consider the Qur'an as being messages descending from their Lord. فَكَانُوا يُتَدَبَّرُونَهَا بِاللَّيْلِ So they would think and contemplate and reflect on those verses in the night and then they would act them out in the day, meaning they had an active active relationship with the Quran. It wasn't just about a book that you read. No, reading is good and it's rewardable. Another way to increase Iman, the Prophet of Allah said, Method al-Mu'min, alladhi yaqra'ul Quran, the example of the believer who recites the Quran. Method al-Utrujja, reehuha tayyib wa ta'muha tayyib, is like the example of the citrus fruit. Its smell is good and its taste is good. Meaning that's going to be good for him if he recites, if he practices to recite the Qur'an as an act of devotion to Allah, to recite the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read the Qur'an. Iqra'ul Qur'an, the Prophet said, recite the Qur'an, read the Qur'an. فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيًا لِأَصْحَابِي Because it will come on the Day of Judgment as an intercessor for its uh, companions, for its close ones. 
And so really we shouldn't allow for a day or a night to pass without us reading something from the Book of Allah. Honestly, if you make this a practice within yourselves, I'm not going to let a day or a night in my life to pass without me reading and reciting something from the Book of Allah. And then to add to that by understanding the message, learning the words, what is Allah telling me to do or not to do, right? And all of this really is in essence a form of dhikr, a form of remembrance. And that is another way to increase one's iman. To remember Allah, simply to remember Allah. In the age in which we are living, in an age of mass consumption and consumerism, and an age of self-praise and self-pride and self-promotion, what time do we have left to remember Allah? Sometimes we think, you know, okay, I, I pray salah, but I don't, I don't think of Allah. Shaitan comes immediately, as you would of course come immediately, and he distracts me from the prayer. But quite simply put, look, if we don't remembering Allah throughout the day, what chance do we have of remembering Allah in the prayer then? It must be about, I remember Allah throughout the day. The Prophet said, make your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. So as a way of increasing our faith, increasing our Iman, to remember Allah all the time, as much as we can, all the time celebrating the praises of Allah in our tasbih, saying of subhanallah and alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar. A beautiful story goes like this. This is a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. Once upon a time, the companions of the Prophet came along and these people were poor and they didn't have much. And they came along and they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, uh, the, the wealthy companions have gone off with a lot of reward. A high station, a high reward. Why? They pray like we pray. And they fast like we fast. And they give charity because they have the money to do so. And we cannot give charity. O oh, Prophet, what should we do then? And the Prophet said, should I not tell you something and teach you something? If you do it, you would become the best of people. If you do this. And no one would become better than you except those who also do it like you. Now, of course, they're so eager to, uh, to learn what they're going to learn. And the Prophet told them, look, to sabbih Allah, glorify Allah, subhanallah, thalatha wa thalatheen, 33 times at the end of every salah. And then praise him, alhamdulillah, the same number. And then exalt him with Allahu Akbar, 33 times after every prayer, and you would become the best of people. And they began to practice that. And then, of course, the wealthy ones are listening in, and, they're, and they're, they've come to realize, hold on, these poor ones are, are now doing something that we don't know about. So we should listen in and hear what they're doing, and they're listening in, and they hear what they're doing, and they began to copy them. And they learned from them the same thing the Prophet taught them in the beginning. Until the poor ones go back to the Prophet and they say, Oh Prophet of Allah, uh, we have now a, another dilemma, a double situation now. Uh, what you taught us to do, the wealthy ones are also doing. And to that the Prophet of Allah replied, That is the grace of Allah that Allah gives to whomever He wants. Right? If the wealthy could be astute enough and pious enough to not miss the opportunity of reward, then that is to their credit, not to their loss. And here the Prophet of Allah was teaching us that great example. So remember Allah as much as you possibly can. Recite from the book of Allah as much as you possibly can. Learn the meanings of that great book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give in charity as an increase of faith. How do we know that? A man came to the Prophet once upon a time, Yashku Qaswata Qalbi, complaining about the hardness of his heart. Right? His heart. And we, of course, all feel that. Sometimes we feel, you know, my heart is so hard. I, I can't connect to Allah. I can't connect to the Quran. The man came with this disturbance and he says, you know, I, I have this problem. I feel my heart is hard. And to that the Prophet of Allah says, Atuhibu an yalina qalbuk. Do you want your heart to become soft? and you want your needs to be fulfilled? And the man says, I, yes, O oh Prophet, I want that. And he says, yatim, have mercy on the orphan. And wipe over his head. And feed him from your food and your heart will become soft and your needs will be fulfilled. <laughs> 
it is not only about ourselves, it is about what we do for other people. And then Allah benefits us. Allah increases our Iman, our faith. If we have that understanding, I'm not living by myself in my world. I have a lot of responsibilities to others outside of myself. So these are a few steps. Always make tawbah, always ask Allah to for forgiveness. Every single day, the Prophet of Allah in the hadith, he says, Tubu ila rabbikum. Seek repentance from your Lord. فَإِنِّي أَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ For I seek Allah's forgiveness. Sabain, 70 times, one narration, 100 times a day. That's the Prophet of Allah doing that as, an, as a lesson for us to do the same. Right? So never let a day pass by. We haven't asked Allah for forgiveness because we make a lot of mistakes along the way. And these all have a negative effect on our Iman. To recite the Quran, to learn to have khushu in our prayers. Right? How often do we simply pray as if it's some kind of a, a ritual, we're just going through the motion? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Successful are the believers, those who have khushu, those who have a sense of serenity and peace and awe of Allah in their prayers. That's the first quality that Allah attributed to the people who are believers, that they have a focus in their prayers. And the reason why it's so, it's so great for them is because the prayer, the salah in essence, is not about the past. It's not about the future either. But it's about the present. And that's why it's difficult. Because you could pray and you're thinking about the past things that you've done, or you're thinking about the things you're going to do. As soon as I finish my prayer, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and so on and so forth. But to hold on, negate both the past and the future, and remember, hold on, I'm in a presence with Allah. Right now, in my time, I'm standing before Allah. It's about now. Has a relevance for me right now as I'm praying. It's you, O oh Allah, that I'm worshipping and only you. And it's your help that I'm seeking in my prayer, essentially, because I'm doing it now. But everything in my life has a relevance in the present for you at that moment in time. So learn about khushu, learn about these things and learn your religion. The more we know, the more we're able to do. The less we know, the less we're able to do. So attend those events and learn about Allah and learn about His Prophet and learn about the Quran and learn about the greatness of this faith and the greatness of this Ummah. And that is an, a way and a step to increase your Iman. These are only a few things, but I hope and pray, inshallah, they are valuable for us. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.